Good evening and welcome to the fifth quarter. I'm Bree Andrews and she's Aria Pons. And Aria, this week the Tigers headed to Ole Miss and it wasn't the same Tiger team that we saw against Florida, but they did start off strong in the first drive, but we just didn't see that same energy going into the rest of the game. How did you see it? You were in Oxford in the student section. What did you see from the Tigers? Bree, the LSU fans were crazy as always. They were super pumped about the 7-0 and lead and after that the football team just plummeted a bit. They did not have a fire. The fire within them lit on offense or defense, and we saw it. I think the biggest problem with this team is definitely consistency. We saw a very very powerful team against Florida, and then the team was not as strong against Ole Miss. So I think that's the biggest thing they need to work on going forward. But following the Tigers' 321-yard performance against Florida, many LSU fans expected another strong rushing attack in Oxford. The Ole Miss defense, however, had other plans. Sports reporter Adam Gattuso has the story. Only seven days after one of the most dominant rushing performances in school history, LSU was unable to gain any momentum on the ground against Ole Miss. The Tigers' run game was stagnant in Oxford. The team finished the game with a total of 77 rushing yards. The lack of offensive production put LSU in a hole, leaving the team no choice but to abandon the run game. I think that we didn't have the success to big runs. and We just got behind on the change a little bit. We tried to throw the football, and plus we got behind. And the first first quarter, we'll just take it our time. Wanted to keep the ball away from them. I thought we did a good job of that. But then we couldn't capitalize when we needed to. The ground attack against the Rebels was a stark contrast to the Tigers' 321-yard performance a week prior versus Florida. Running back Ty Davis-Price led the team with just 53 yards against Ole Miss. The longest run of the night was a carry of only 12 yards by freshman running back Corey Kiner. The inability to run the football was a key factor in the outcome of the game. We ran the ball for 77, they ran for 266. I think that's the story of the game. The Tigers now sit at 4-4 four and four on the season. LSU will have a week off to fix their mistakes before traveling to Tuscaloosa to face the Alabama Crimson Tide. For Tiger TV Sports, I'm Adam Gattuso. It was announced earlier today by Coach Ogeron that offensive lineman Anthony Bradford will miss the remainder of the season due to injury. This news is yet the latest obstacle the offense will have to overcome heading into the bye week. Saturday's matchup versus Ole Miss was not the only thing on fans' minds. Just last weekend, it was announced that the LSU football program and head coach Ed Orgeron would part ways following the 2021 football season. The news comes just two seasons after the Tigers won the national championship. The announcement was met with mixed reaction from LSU fans. While in Oxford on Saturday, traveling LSU fans shared their reactions to the news. Personally, I, I understand that our play these past two years is not up to par for what LSU thinks, so I, I get why I fired him. I personally like Coach O, though. I mean, I wish we would have kept him. I was expecting it to happen, but I was very disappointed. I don't want him to go. I don't want to see him go. I understand that the expectations at LSU are high. However, I think we could have given him more time. Fans also shared their guesses on who might be the next coach of the Tigers. Guesses included Clemson's Dabo Sweeney, former defensive coordinator Dave Aranda, and Pittsburgh Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin. Now onto the court, the LSU men's hoops has high expectations for the season, which seemed to be met in their exhibition game on Saturday. However, this game was played for something bigger than basketball. Sports reporter Braxton Lee has the story. <laughs> LSU men's basketball traveled to Nickel State for an exhibition game to support victims of Hurricane Ida. The hurricane left the city of Thibodeau in shock, so Nickel State head coach Austin Clonch was overjoyed when he got the call to play against the Tigers. For this community, um, for those guys to come down here, you know, Will called us a little while back to kind of set this up, and you saw the atmosphere. It was so much fun today to compete against those guys and have these people feel so over. Um, you know, and again, great, great to get your first scrimmage against a really good team in LSU. You know, a team I think is going to make the NCAA tournament and make a little run. The Tigers started out strong against a very scrappy Colonels team with a couple of threes from Tari Eason, who led all scores with 22 points. But Nickel State came firing back with a trifecta of threes from Pierce Spencer and one from Ty Gordon, which put the Colonels up by four at the end of the first half. This momentum would carry over as Nickel State started the second half on an 11-3 run. But after a stint of defensive stops, the Tigers began to claw their way ahead. Eric Gaines led LSU with nine assists and Easton leading with 15 rebounds, helping the Tigers surge to a 74-62 win over the Colonels. The Tigers open their season on November 9th as they take on the University of Louisiana Monroe at the PMAC.